Okay, our uh, die has dried completely on these panels and, and now they're ready for the sanding sealer. A couple of things I wanted to mention that I, I failed to mention in the first video. We're, we're shooting this die on maple. Now, most of my projects are done in maple. I really like maple. It's a good hard wood. I like the grain. But maple is one of those woods that's a little difficult for most people to sand because it tends to have some wild grain in it and uh, you get dark splotches. And that's one of the reasons I really like the dye because the dye gives a more even uh, finish. Now, I did mention also that the type of dye that I'm using, this is not a water-based dye. A water-based dye will raise the grain and then you would have to, you'd have to knock the, what I call the hair off of it after you finish your dye. This is a, a petroleum-based dye and it dries pretty quick. Uh, you want to give at least two to three hours dry time between uh, your, your uh, applying the dye. So once, uh, once that's done, we're, we're ready to do the um, uh, sanding sealer. But I do want to mention here for a moment and kind of show you, I don't know how well you can see that. You'll notice this panel has kind of a, a grayish brown color. This is not the color that it's going to finish off at. When we start spraying the uh, sand and sitter on it, you'll get the uh, you'll get a better idea of what the color will look like. The, the dye is a little deceiving when you first see it uh, dry like this and you think, man, I've just messed up. This is not the right color at all. Well, you'll see whenever I start spraying the difference in how it's going to look. So well, let me get that set up here in a minute and we'll, we'll get that going. I want to say something about the uh, sealer here. This this here is a um, sanding sealer. It's a vinyl type sanding sealer. It's from Gemini. And I'm back to using my standard tip. Uh, also, the, the tip is a, or the standard cap. I have a uh, .315 tip in that. So you want to make sure that you keep it shook up. That way you, you, your solids are nice and even as they flow on. So, We'll get this going here in a second, and uh, you'll you'll get a better look. I may reposition the camera so you can get a better look at the finish as it's going down. Kind of, it, it will be your first indication of your your color and how much more uh, stain you'll have to add to it to deepen that color a bit. So let me go get the boiler fans, and we'll get started. Okay, we're back. Now the sanding sealer has dried uh, sufficiently. Only takes about 15 minutes for this for this uh, sanding sealer to dry. Now what we're going to do is, if you run your hand across and feel it, it feels kind of rough, and uh, that's that's good. Uh, no problem there. We're going to use a 320 grit. This is a Hermes uh, 320. It has a foam backing, and uh, I generally take these fold them in half and tear them. I, I can manage the half pad a little better than the other and I'll just set that aside. And what you want to do is just kind of lightly, you're not, gonna, you're not trying to sand it down to the surface, you're just trying to knock it, that uh, hair, that rough finish off. And once you do this, you can rub your hand across and it just feels really slick and smooth. And that's what you're looking for. It doesn't take you just a, a couple of minutes to get that done. Up here on the end of the panel where you had the end grain, you want to get down in there and kind of rub that out a little bit. Take your fingers and put down on the edge there and take that out. You want to go around the edge of your panel. Get that nice and smooth. Also the, the corner edges there. You want to get that really nice and smooth there. Now, we are ready to uh, apply another uh, stain top or coat on this. Now I want to say something about the way I do this. I haven't sealed the front side yet, and I'll, this is another reason for starting on the back. I want to hit this with my with my stain, and that will give me an idea whether or not I need to flip the front side over and 
um, maybe shoot another layer of stain before I put the seal on. So whatever I'm doing to the back is not going to be as uh, consequential as, uh, as just doing the front first. I can pretty much test my theory here on the back side first, and then uh, whatever we need to do, we can adjust it and, and uh, make, it, make it good on the front side. So let me go over here and get my uh, uh, stain. I've already swapped it out. I'm back to my uh, HDLP kit, the uh, point, uh, what did I say, the point uh, 310 kit and uh, the, the HBLP cap. We're ready to go on that. So let me go over here and get the um, fan going. And I want to reposition the camera so you can get a better look, kind of get an idea how this is going to uh, darken it up a bit. And you'll start seeing it come closer to the color that we're looking for in the final stage. Okay, the uh, stain has dried on the uh, surface. Remember, we've got one seal coat, and I've tinted the uh, stain on top here, trying to bring it up to the color we're looking for. Uh, remember, I told you that we start on the back side first uh, before we flip it and do the uh, front side. Uh, I've got no sealer on the front, and, and, and the reason why we want to do that is we want to test it out on the back side. The, the back of these doors will never be seen until they open it, so. If we didn't make any adjustments uh, to our process, we can do that on the front side. And this is a good example of why we do that, uh, because I am going to make an adjustment to, to the, to the uh, stain on the front. I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, sealing this back side for my second seal coat. And uh, when that dries, we'll flip it. And I'm going to go ahead and put another coat of stain uh, on the front side. The reason I want to do that, I don't know if you can see uh, very well, but this, this particular piece panel and, and many others have some uh, highly figured wood. Uh, this has some tiger maple, a little tiger strapping there. And if I were to continue this process on the front side, essentially what to, to get it as dark as I want to have it, I'd, I'd end up painting away all of that uh, figure and I don't want to. I don't want to remove that from the uh, piece. I want it to be an even color all over. But I want to highlight those uh, areas. I want them to still be seen. And if I were to uh, continue the way I'm going here, as I am on the back, uh, I run the risk of uh, just more or less painting over that and making it uh, even where you wouldn't want to see it. So we will go ahead and continue. I'm going to reposition the uh, camera so you can see this as I seal it. You can kind of get an idea of what the grain looks like, and uh, then we'll let that dry and flip it and uh, uh, stain the other side. Okay, the uh, second seal coat has dried. Now I want to flip this panel over, and uh, we're going to we're going to apply another uh, coat of stain on this because it's it's just too light. I don't want to end up, as I said before, painting this grain out. Let me uh, pull the camera over here, and I can show you what I'm talking about. If you look down this panel here, you see these stripes that go sideways. This is tiger maple. It's a very beautiful feature when it's finished off right, and and uh, I, I just don't want to end up painting all that the same color. So by putting another coat of stain on this, these areas that are dark will absorb more of the stain than will the rest of it, and, and those features will show up whenever we 
uh, finally get it as dark as we want it to. So let me go uh, turn the fan on and uh, we'll spray this and uh, let you see what it looks like. Okay, you notice how that the stain is absorbing in these open grained areas, and that's exactly what you want to do in, in the lighter areas. You want to be uh, be able to see that. So we're gonna we're gonna go to lunch, and we're gonna let this dry, and we'll come back and put our first coat of uh, sealer on this, and you'll see a dramatic difference from the uh, back side as we started that. Now we're ready to. Uh, put the first seal coat on this panel since it's dry and as you can tell it is darker than uh, previous. I want to reposition the camera overhead so you can see this panel as I spray. <clears throat> These areas that I described earlier as tiger maple, you, you'll notice as I spray that, the, these features will just pop when you put that sealer over. And the sealer will also give you more of a closer uh, indication as to what the true color is going to look like once you put your lacquer finish on there. So uh, give me just a second and we'll get started with that. Now if you'll notice these dark areas here where that tiger striping is showing up, now that's exactly what we want. And you can see the grain here better. Uh, by putting a second coat of the stain on there, we, we didn't uh, paint the grain out. We, we want to have those features in there as we tint this a little darker. So uh, all, all in all, I'm pretty well pleased with this panel. It's, it's looking good. This would be a gorgeous panel just like it is but it doesn't match the customer sample and we've got to get it darker. So we'll let this dry and we'll <clears throat> put a little tanning on there uh, with the stain and seal coat our second sealer on it and uh, see where we're standing there. All right, this panel has dried. We've got the first seal coat on the top. And as you can see, it's uh, fairly dark, not quite what we want it to be. Now we're going to have to take and uh, use our 320 grit uh, paper has the foam backing and we're going to wipe this off and sand it down, get it nice and smooth. Yeah. You want to just, a lot of times you want to just use your hands and feel, you know, my eyes can deceive me a lot of times, but you can feel uh, things a lot better sometimes than you can see. And you want to pay attention to these end grain here as you're um, sanding that. You want to get that really good. And you might ask, um, what happens to all that sawdust that's on top? There's not, not a lot of it there, but this is real fine. I'll tell you a little story about that. I started uh, in this business years ago, and when I first started out, I would take and do just what I'm doing right now, and then I'd go back in my tack cloth, and I would tack it off. A friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, Mr. Frank Sheriff, who helped me get started in the business, he observed me one day wiping down the uh, panel with a tack cloth and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm tacking it off. He said, listen, uh, you're not painting cars here. I said, what do you mean? He said, that dust that you, that you have there, it's, uh, when you put your finish on it, it's just gonna melt it right back in. Uh, the finish there, and I didn't believe him at first, but he, he convinced me to try it, and sure uh, 
enough, it does work. This, this dust will basically settle back down to these fine pores in your wood and uh, act sort of like a putty sealer. Uh, it may be visible on the outside, you may see it as a white powder, but when you put that uh, finish back on top, it'll, it'll just melt it right back into the finish. Uh, especially here on the end grain, I'll show you one of these here in a minute. We get this uh, sanded off here. You see how? I don't know if you can see it real well, but that's nice and white. Kind of. Well, that's that. That end grain is real susceptible to uh, soaking in the sand and sealer. So you got to watch those areas. Make sure you get good coverage on that. And and that powder that's left over is beneficial here. It kind of helps seal that off better. So we're going to go over that whole panel, make sure that you've got every every area sanded uh, properly. I, I try to be very systematic in the way that I finish, follow the same routine each time I do a door panel, that way I don't forget anything. But it, then again, I always try to use my fingers and go back over the panel and feel, make sure that there's not an area that I miss. And uh, everything's feels pretty good, a little spot right there. Things that I just cannot see with my eye, but I can I can feel it. And it, it all feels real good. So now we're ready to apply a uh, uh, coat of dye on that, to kind of bring that down a little darker. So I'm gonna get the uh, fan on and I'm gonna reposition the camera so we can see this a little better. Now we're ready to put on the final seal coat on the top side. Now I've done a couple panels ahead of this one and I can tell you that we're not quite to the depth of the darkness that we need on that. But as I told you from the beginning, this is a layering effect. You can always add a little more until it's hard to uh, take it off once you've gone too far. So uh, you'll see what I mean here in a minute as I start spraying this. It's, it's just right under where we need to be. And so we'll, we'll, we'll spray this final uh, sealer coat. When it dries, we'll uh, go ahead and start spraying the lacquer on there. And I'll keep the uh, uh, stain handy. We can tint uh, ahead of the lacquer, if, if need be, to darken it up, and then spray the lacquer down. But we'll do that in video number three. So watch as we uh, uh, do this one. I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera up closer so you can get a better look as I spray it. Now you can still see the uh, tiger maple here, that, that real figured wood. I, I really love that. This is a beautiful panel. You can see the wood grain here, which is uh, what we're shooting for. We need to be just slightly darker. Let me get the uh, sample panel. Okay, here's the sample panel. If we hold that up and look at it, you can see that we're getting very close. We just need to be a hair, just a hair darker. And of course, this panel here is wet and it, it shows a little differently. So we'll get a better look at it once it dries. But that's what we're going for right there. 